Hello, I'm Professor Lou. Welcome to our live stream. Today we are going to be doing a Instagram critique focusing on two Instagrams. The first one is by Amar and the second one is by Emil. If you would like to grow as an artist and you can't afford an art class, we've got everything you need here, art prof, critiques, tutorials, and professional development. We're gonna get started by looking at Amar's Instagram. And if you guys go down to the video description below, you will see that Amar and Emil, who by the way, is live with us in the chat, which is very exciting, read their artist statements about their work and about what some of their goals are for their Instagrams. So starting with Amar's Instagram, Amar is 16. They are originally from Syria, although right now they are living in Germany. And Amar says in their statement that they're interested in how to get their name out there in terms of selling their artwork and also in terms of getting commissions. Tell me in the chat, I'm curious, those of you who are on Instagram, who here would like to use Instagram as a way to get commissions or sell their work? And what have you found to be effective in order to achieve that? Let's get started with the <clears throat> profile page because I think that's the most important thing. It's the first thing that people see when they discover your Instagram. And Amar, actually the thing that threw me off with your Instagram was this. So here it says Amar Habash, which I know is your name, but I got confused because I thought that was your Instagram handle because of the underscore. And I remember at one point I tried to go back and find it and I just typed in Amar underscore Habash. And so I wouldn't put in that underscore. I would just write your name as it is. So that way it's distinguished from your actual Instagram handle. I also think your Instagram handle could be a little bit easier to type. I don't know about you guys, but when I see more than one underscore, I get annoyed. I know I'm very lazy <laughs> that way, but you just want your Instagram handle to be recognizable or you want it to be unique so that people don't feel that it's a big pain to type it out. Like once an Instagram handle gets really long, the opportunity for a typo is very high. So I would just try to make that as easy as possible. And I would say also really look at this text. You guys, this text that you put in your profile page, it's really valuable real estate because Instagram does not give you a lot of room to write about yourself. And here you're stating the obvious. You're saying my name is Amar, which we know. You're saying I'm 16 years old, which honestly, I don't think it's that important for people to put on their age. You can, I don't think it's that helpful though. In fact, sometimes if you're in high school, people may not want to commission from you as readily because you are young. I'm sorry, you guys, it's just stereotypes people have against younger people. It's just, that's the way that's oftentimes perceived. But also here, where you say, I love drawing and painting. I like to post my artwork on this page. Hopefully you'll enjoy it. That's again, not telling me anything new. And so I would just make sure when you guys have text that it's really saying something important or it's revealing something about your process. I mean, a lot of people like drawing and painting. People post their artwork on their Instagram, hope you'll enjoy it. Yeah, I mean, we all know those things. So Amar, I would say, say something about yourself. Like in your statement, you say that you're from Syria, you live in Germany right now. Like that, I think would be really nice to put in your profile. You don't have to put down your country or location, but it's a way to get you to stand out a little bit more. Alexander says, hello, haircut prof. Oh, I'm glad you guys like it. I cut it too short. Well, because my hair was wet when I cut it. I was like, oh, it's too long. So I, and then I woke up this morning. I was like, oh my God, it's so much shorter <laughs> than I wanted it to be. But it doesn't matter. It's going to grow out. It's just hair. Like, who cares? <laughs> yes. Alexander says, you want your Instagram to be memorable. 
in some way. It doesn't matter what it is, but I will remember somebody from Syria who lives in Germany over, I love drawing and painting. So keep that in mind. I also think this is not the best profile photo. I mean, people have different ideas about whether it should be a photo of you or a self-portrait or something. But I have to say, Amar, as much as I love angsty, <laughs> angry portraits, you guys know that's totally up my alley. It, it's a little bit aggressive for your profile picture. And the thing is, it doesn't really match the work on your website because... The only other artwork that I think is somewhat along the same lines would be this one. This one has an expressiveness. It has that same violent, aggressive quality to it. But actually, the rest of the work on your site is fairly tame in terms of subject matter. And I think that the profile picture you have, it gives an impression that that's the type of work I'm going to see on the account. And so when I come down... And I see these classical studies of nudes. I also see this John Singer Sargent master copy. It doesn't quite line up that much. So I would just make sure the profile picture, it could be a picture of you, or maybe it's one that's a little bit more representative of what's on your site. Because what I found about social media is people don't want to feel misled. The, the same way on YouTube. Like if you guys ever clicked on the thumbnail on YouTube expecting one thing and then you watch the video and you're like, that's not what I clicked on the video for. So it's like you want the expectations to make sense. Oh, wonderful. Amar is here live with us in the chat. So we're very excited to have you and I'm excited to review your work. All right. Now here you have, I'm going to guess, okay, you've got your website here and that's great. That's exactly what you want to have. I would just say, this is another video, but this is a really long URL. You guys, it's really, really worth it to buy your own domain name. And it doesn't have to necessarily just be your name. It can be something more simplified. But I know if I even tried to remember this domain, there's no chance I would. And so it's very important that you guys spend the money. I know it's a pain. I know we're trying to cut back on expenses anywhere we can as artists, but that is one thing you really do want to spend money on because it does make a big difference in terms of people being able to remember you. Eliza says, I want to change my profile picture, but I'm afraid that my followers won't recognize my posts anymore. I wouldn't worry about that. I mean, if your posts are fairly consistent and you're not like revamping your whole identity, it's probably okay. And honestly, it's better to do it when you have a smaller audience rather than a bigger one. Because the funny thing is, for example, I spent so long, many years building up ArtProf and you spend so long trying to get the attention. Okay. But then when you get the attention, you realize, oh my gosh, this is a whole other level of scrutiny <laughs> that comes along. And that's when people really start to notice when you mess up. And so it's better to make those changes early rather than later. Now, Amar, you have these Instagram stories. So I'm just going to click through these. Okay. So these are nice and casual. Actually, I really like this one with the sneakers because it tells me something about who you are. But it's also a little bit artsy. So I like that. Okay, cool. So these are nice. And wow, we got a lot of sketches. This is good. I like that the sketches are in the story. I like that they're more casual. This is a great place because I think that sometimes people, they put everything in the post and use Instagram stories, all of you. Tell me in the chat, how many of you regularly look at Instagram stories, because I'll tell you, sometimes I find the Instagram stories way more fun than the posts. Like sometimes a lot of the Instagram posts, they actually come across as a little bit too curated, a little bit too perfect. And I think one of the reasons a lot of us are attracted to Instagram stories is that they are sort of sloppy and they show more the artist's personality a lot of the time. And so I like very much, Amara, that you have so many sketches for us to look at. All right, this Instagram story is questions. That's always a lot of fun for people to read about you. Cool. 
Yeah, this is wonderful. I think this is great that you have a question section. The only thing I would change about your highlights, I think it's a little strange that they are these black and white circles. At least for me, it makes it hard to find the highlight that I want to see. Like, let's say I'm looking at your Instagram and I'm like, oh, I want to find the wallpaper highlight again. Wallpaper sketches and questions, they're all white circles. And so it makes it really hard for me to identify that. Like this is Mia Rosier's and you can see by having the pictures and the colors, it's much easier to distinguish exactly which Instagram story is which. So I recommend just change it to a image. I think that'll be a lot easier to see. Pago Rami says, I love watching stories. I like the fact that they show more behind the scenes than a formal post. H3Art says, I feel pressured to make my first post on Instagram and what they should be. Honestly, I would just say throw up a bunch of posts. I'll be honest, when I go to an Instagram and there isn't a full grid of images, let's say there's two, it makes me not want to follow because <laughs> it looks like the Instagram is not very active or, oh, you're just getting started. And so there's not a lot to look at. Just throw something on there. You can always archive the posts. You can delete them later. There's no harm. And again, when you don't have a big following, people aren't paying attention that closely. And so that's actually the best time to be messing around and experimenting and seeing, oh, well, what works and what doesn't? Because if you're not doing that, you're not gonna figure out what works. You just gotta try it. That's the way a lot of these platforms work. Ashley says, sometimes it's hard to be consistent when uploading artwork since I don't have a large audience. Well, I'll tell you the consistency of posting and actually Amar, I know you did, oh no, it wasn't Amar, Emil. Emil had a question in their statement about, okay, how do you make sure that you have enough to post? Because sometimes you don't have anything to post. <laughs> you know, we can't be making artwork all the time. Life gets in the way and sometimes you don't have a lot to post. So what I would recommend, use Throwback Thursday. That's a great cheat sheet, all of you. What you can do is you can find an artwork from a couple years ago. And people really like that because oftentimes they can see your progress. They can go, whoa, you've improved so much from all those years ago. And then you don't have to have a lot of new work <laughs> to show. I do that all the time where I'm like, oh, I haven't posted in a while. Okay, throwback Thursday. <laughs> so that can be a really good way to make that happen. Emil, whose Instagram we're going to review in a little bit, says, I love watching stories. I definitely should start using the story feature more often. I actually think that I'm posting more stories than posts. I mean, I've been terrible about it. I'm so busy with Art Prof. I've only been posting like once a month, which is terrible. But I do post in the stories. And the stories, I think, are a good indication to the average visitor who's casually seeing, oh, yes, they are still alive. <laughs> Because if you don't see a story and the last post was a month ago, usually that makes people think, oh, this account is not very active. And so I don't need to follow them. Azrael Angelo says, sometimes I feel annoyed by stories. Well, I mean, that's the way it's going to be. <laughs> I mean, how can you be on social media and not be annoyed by something <laughs> at some point? That's just going to happen. Vanessa says, how many images is a good number to start your Insta? I was thinking of having at least seven or so, but I'm not sure if I need more. I would just make sure, Vanessa, that when people visit your Instagram on a phone, that the page is filled up. I can't remember how many squares it is. I think it's like nine squares. So have at least nine, maybe 12, just so you're fully covered. Again, so people don't look at your Instagram and go, oh, they're just getting started. I'm not gonna bother following them. That would be a good thing to do as well. Now, Amar, as far as commissions go, first of all, we do have two videos that talk very specifically about commissions, all the logistics of making that happen. So I definitely recommend that. But the first thing I notice is that the only indication that you're open for commissions is here. In your profile, you say open for commissions DM, okay? That's not enough information because I'm looking at your Instagram 
I don't think I see any commissions here. I mean, a lot of these that I'm looking at, this is an anatomy study. You have a self-portrait. This is like a narrative illustration. It's another self-portrait, a still life painting. And these are all fine for your Instagram. But the thing is, there's no commissions here. Like I can't see, oh, if I wanted to commission a piece from Amar, what would it look like? People want to know what they're going to get. And so it would be really helpful. Maybe you could have a story, an Instagram highlight that has images of, oh, here are samples of what those commissions might look like, because then it's easier to find if it's in your Instagram highlight. But people really want to know what the result is. And you have to give them information. When people just say, I'm open for commissions, it's not that helpful. So here's an example. This is a commission sheet from Jordan McCracken Foster, who's a teaching artist here. And he's really clear about what he does, how to contact him, what are the prices. I mean, he even says, this is what I do and this is what I don't do. So he says, yes, I do OCs, fan art, any pose. He says, I do not do, not safe for work, Mecca and Gore. And so he makes it so easy for you. And then the other thing, he shows you the style. So this is a human figure, but then he also has these chibi avatar commissions he does. And so you can look at this and say, oh, I want a chibi of my, I want a chibi of myself. What did that mean? I should commission one of those from Jordan. <laughs> They're so wonderful. And so I think the issue, Amar, is that you're not showing people what is the result? You're not giving them enough information about how that goes because your average person does not really know what's involved with the commission. They have no idea how to go about doing that. So as the artist, you have to just like lay it all out for them because I think when people have to wonder, oh, is it like this? That's enough of a hurdle for them to say, eh, I'm not going to bother. For those of you guys in the chat who are watching, how many of you here have commissioned artwork and how many of you have done commissions? And what advice would you give Amar as far as really getting that jump started? Because it's not easy to get commissions. It takes time. You have to fill up more of a following. And I will also tell you, Amar, that in general, people tend to like color more when it comes to commissions. And when I look at your Instagram, the vast majority of your images are all black and white. You have some color, but you may want to shift up that dynamic. So maybe half the Instagram is color because black and white, I'm sorry, I'm a big black and white fan. I love black and white, but it's just not that popular with your average audience. And in the end for commission work, color always wins. So I would highly recommend you do that. Also, I would avoid repetition in your stories and posts. So this image, I remember I saw this in an Instagram story, leave it out because I think that when I see the post and the story is the same thing, it feels a little bit boring. All right. Now also I would say as far as commissions go, one thing you can try, which Mia who does the YouTube comments and you guys have seen her on some of the live streams. She just started doing these quote floating head commissions. And I love these. I think these are phenomenal and they're really charming. And does everybody see it's a really obvious format? She says, okay, they're digital. They're floating heads. Who, who else does floating head commissions? Like, I don't know anybody else who does. Maybe it's a thing and I'm just clueless. But what Mia did, which I thought was really smart, is she says, I thought it could be fun to do a little raffle with these. So if you'd like one, tag a friend below. So if you guys are just getting started and you don't have a big following, it sometimes is worth it to give away a couple of free pieces. So that way you just get your stuff out there. I'm very established. I don't do work for free <laughs> anymore because I can't afford to do that. But I mean, you're fairly young, you're 16, you can totally afford to do that. And so what you will see also is that in Mia's stories, a lot of people who got the commission from her actually ended up posting in their stories about the commission. And that was also really good publicity for her to get the word out. So 
show people exactly what it is that you do. Don't make it so unclear. It's really difficult. Vanessa says, clients usually say, quote, something blue, something like that. Show you an art full of different aspects. You have to guess what they are talking about. Style, color, technique. I know clients can drive you crazy. I mean, that's why I don't do <laughs> commissions because they are so, so frustrating. But I would recommend just being really, really clear cut. And this is a good comment from Yoel who says, do the giveaways, small prints or stickers, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of ways you can do that. I know a lot of people will do like a flash sale. Like they'll say, oh, I'm doing commissions for this one week. I have a coupon in my store, or maybe I'm doing it limited time for this lower price. There's so many ways that you can put the work out there. And I mean, one of the reasons I put Emil and Amar in the same stream is because you are both in high school. You're both I mean, Emil is 17, Amar is 16. And so you're sort of in the same place as far as your career development goes. Yeah, so I would definitely think about that. And then the other thing I would just say, Amar, is work on your text captions because I think your text captions, they're really hashtag heavy. And I'll tell you, when I go through your posts, I see more hashtags than I see post the text caption. And so what happens is the hashtags just visually, they just like drown out what you're trying to say. And like, if you really wanna show your voice, show it in the caption and cut back on those hashtags. I honestly don't think they're that big of a deal. I think making a personal caption is far more important than a hashtag because that's where you really connect with people. And then I would also say the work that speaks to me the most, Amar, I think this is a great self-portrait. I think it's a lot of expression to it. I really like this one with the eye. I feel like the other ones that are studies, like this is a copy of the Laocoon Hellenistic Greek sculpture. You have the Lady Agnew by John Singer Sargent. These I would put in your stories because they're really exercises. Whereas this self-portrait, and also I would say some of these other ones, I actually really like this shoe study. These to me have more personality and those are the ones that you want to reserve as your posts. All right, let's move on. We're going to look at Emil's Instagram. So Emil is 17. They are from Austria. And Emil says in their order statement that they're interested in terms of topics about gender, LGBTQ, beauty, but also climate change as well. And I love that you have such a broad interest, although they are related. I mean, gender, LGBTQ, beauty, climate change is sort of in another category. But I'll tell you, Emil, when I read that statement and I looked at your Instagram, the images where I saw you exploring those themes very visibly, I would say this one for sure. I would also say this portrait, which is eerie in a good way. <laughs> I like eerie stuff. <laughs> That's just me. I love this portrait as well. And this one I think is really intense. And I, this is one of my favorite pieces on your Instagram because it really talks about those themes in a very direct, deep way. I think some of the other ones is a little harder to catch. Like this one in the caption, you say it's about climate change and generational conflict. But the thing is, if I just look at it and I don't read the text caption, it just looks like a portrait of a boy. And so I think try to have more images like this one. Try to really push those themes because those themes to me are so important. You know, I think that the way people um, talk about gender roles, it's so different now than when I was in high school. I mean, we didn't even have the word transgender when I was in high school. And now it's in the news, it's in the mainstream media. And that's so different than the way things used to be. So I think that I would recommend really pumping up those ideas because a lot of these images like this, they feel quite generic to me. Same thing with this skull study. Like a lot of these are great practice. And I'm not saying you should stop doing them. It's just that a lot of them don't have remotely the personality that an image like, like this is so distinctive, Emil. This is what I'm going to remember from your Instagram. If I look at your Instagram, though, 
I'm not going to remember this. Like th this is sort of similar to what we were looking at in a Mars piece. I'm all for master studies. Master studies are great. They're really good exercise. But the thing is, they're generic. Everybody does them. And they're not going to get me to remember you. And that's the difference with the Instagram post. You really want to show us who you are. And Emil says, I think the topic of the painting about climate change becomes clearer in the second slide. Okay, but the thing is, though, you know what? People are lazy. <laughs> they oftentimes won't click on the second slide. So it's like you need stuff to be very clear. Yeah, see, I still don't see it. Like, I see it's somebody in a boat and they're in the ocean. But what does that say about climate change? Like, it does not necessarily say climate change. It would be like having a picture of a hot sunny day, but it's like, you don't know that that hot sunny day is directly about climate change. So I think if you wanna work with themes like that, I just recommend like, like really show us something in that image that pops. Because this image up here, it's like those eyes are just mesmerizing. They're luscious, but they're also disturbing at the same time. And I am just completely, immersed in this image, which I think is just wonderful. Adelosh says, some of these are just so great, but the ones you call generic, I honestly agree they feel Pinteresty. Yeah, I would agree with that. And I would also say like, I love this, this is great. Because first of all, a lot of people don't do sculpture. And I love that you're engaging with the material. It's a really nice photo. So it's good to have a change of pace. Like I'm not saying you should have every piece should look like this one because that's not gonna happen. But I do think that you have a couple posts that are like, I don't know why this is here. You have Creature from the Black Lagoon, okay. But okay, so you have a painting of it. But see, I would flip it. Like I would have the artwork as the first image and have the movie still in the second image. Because again, you can't count on people clicking to the next thing. You guys, when I have done usability testing for websites, it's horrifying how lazy people are. People are like, I don't wanna have to click. I don't like, are you serious? They're like, yeah, I don't wanna have to like, that's just one too many clicks for me. And that can definitely be the case until you have like a hardcore following. That is really, really difficult to do. Yoel says, good insight, post your pieces and a story about your studies and your growth. Yeah, which is interesting because this one, there's no caption. And yet it's the most interesting piece that I'm seeing so far. You have the hashtags, but again, those aren't really enough. But then if I look at some of these other ones, like this one, you do bother to explain what's going on. And yet subject matter wise to me, it's not remotely as powerful as say this portrait. I'm gonna assume it's a self portrait. You can correct me if I'm wrong, Emil, just because it looks similar to your profile image. But I would work on your photographs, Emil, because I love what you're doing with the makeup and the facial expression and the theatricality of it but I think you can really pump it up. So for example, Emil, I would definitely look at some photographers. I would look at Marilyn Minter, is a wonderful contemporary photographer because you've got great ideas, but the main thing I'm seeing, the issue with your photos is that the lighting is not good. I think the lighting in this one is very washed out. The backdrop looks a little bit messy. And Marilyn Minter does these like luscious images with glitter and jewelry. And she works with similar themes of gender roles. And so I would definitely take a look at her work as well. And then the other thing I might look at in terms of lighting, has anybody here seen the HBO show Euphoria? I just watched one episode, I haven't seen the whole thing yet. But the lighting in that show and the way that they, design the light and the colors is beautiful. So I would recommend that you take a look at that, Emil, because this portrait could be amazing, but the lighting is so flat that you're not taking advantage of what's really there. Yuel says, so have your pieces and posts express you or the theme more. Yeah, 
Because if you guys go on Instagram and you're like, hi, I paint flowers, like a lot of people paint flowers, you know? So how are you gonna distinguish yourself from the thousands of other people that paint flowers? And so let's go through, let me show you what some of the other distinctive images are. Like, I think this is really interesting. Like you say here, a cute little commission from a friend of mine. This is sort of similar to Mia's in that it's so specific. It's like, wow, I could have myself as an iguana. Like, that's awesome. Like, I want to know more about that. You also need to work on your photography of your artwork. I can see there's a little bit of glare here. It looks a little bit dark. I could be wrong. Maybe that's what the image actually looks like, but I definitely recommend that. By the way, I'm going to give a shout out to Miranda. Thank you so much for the super sticker. We greatly appreciate your support. Everybody, we are trying really hard to hit our Patreon goal, which is 5,000 a month. We're at about 3,000 and we can really use your help because when you support Art Prof, you're helping somebody in the world who can't afford an art class. There's a lot of you out there. And so we greatly appreciate any support you can give us. Process-wise, Emil, there's a photo up here of your linoleum carving. This is a beautiful photo. It's really nicely done. I love the way it's composed it really shows off the process. Like, especially people who don't know what linoleum printmaking is like. I would, however, add, you know, you could add another image of linoleum blocks. So people who don't know, they might look at this and might go, whoa, what does that look like? And so you could add it to the carousel. It's not totally necessary, but it is something that you could think about. But really, Emil, I think it's like, you need to work on your photography skills because if you can get those to be better, it's gonna make all your posts better because you know what? 95% of Instagram is the photography. And if you don't improve your photography skills, it, it's like you're almost dead in the water at that point. So really spend time doing that. I'm sure there's stuff you can find online about lighting, like especially how they light films. I mean, there's all kinds of amazing effects that you can do that. Emil says, yes, I will definitely work on my photography. Photographing big oil paintings is so difficult. Oh, it's the biggest pain. <laughs> what I recommend, Emil, we do have a stream on how to photograph artwork. It's very long, but it's extremely comprehensive. And so if you watch that entire video, I talk about how to get rid of glare, how to deal with value and how to Photoshop and tweak and all that stuff. So definitely. Yeah, Monica says, I'm just learning by myself from YouTube. Yeah, there's a lot of you out there. How many of you here learn most of your art from YouTube? Like maybe you've taken a class, but, but let's just say the majority of what you're learning is free content on YouTube. I'd be very curious to hear how many of you are in that boat. And that's why I think art prof is important because we don't have a paywall. And we don't have premium content. We give it all of it to you for free. And that's always been very, very important to me. Another comment about your technique, Emil, it's interesting you posted this, which is a work in progress. And then here you posted, it's a commissioned portrait. This is the finished version. To me, Emil, I like the work in progress way more. I think in this one, the brushwork is looser. I think that you're more direct. Like I actually love the brush work in the lower left-hand corners. Everybody sees just a couple strokes of the green paint to show the collar. And then in here, the shirt becomes very flat and rendered. You're getting very fussy about the details. And so I would say in general, Emil, when you are painting, try to do a little less. I know that sounds weird, but I think there is such a thing as almost polishing your painting to death. And it's like, just because you can do that amount of detail, it doesn't mean you should. So I would recommend actually who we were talking about with Amar's Instagram is John Singer Sargent was so good at that. He really knew how to cut back on the brushwork. Look at Ander Zorn. I will put his name in the chat as well. And he's a great person, like really look at that brushwork and see what he's doing in terms of that. 
And then another thing I would say is in terms of posting more often, one thing you can do, which I do, is you can just like batch your photos. Because what I do when I'm taking photos of anything, like let's say I do a drawing, I will take so many photos. I will take like <clears throat> 20 photos of a single drawing session. But then I have 20 photos and I can just go in and spread out those photos over a long period of time. So when I'm doing an Instagram post, usually that one photo I post is one out of 20 other photos that I shot that same day, but then I have those other 19 photos and I can pull them out anytime. So a big part of Instagram is just having this like gigantic stock of photos. Like Mia Rozier, I'm sure some of you saw the tarot card stream that I did with her. She just ran a Kickstarter campaign, which was very successful. And she's gonna be on the stream on Saturday to speak to us about what she did, how she pulled it off, which is amazing. But she said to me, she could not believe how many photos she had to take to make the Kickstarter interesting. And you can see there are so many photos and they're not all of the same thing. And so that's generally what I recommend is don't do one photo at a time, like just batch produce all these photos and it's really, really helpful. So that way you're not stuck because not everybody can post all the time, okay? I mean, I'm the worst, I am not posting, but I have enough of a following now that it's okay for me to get away with that. If you're trying to have more of a following, it's trickier. The other thing you can also do is cut back on how often you post. In my opinion, twice a week, great, fabulous. That's what my Hika says. Schedule my uploads twice a week works for me. That's plenty. Once a week is fine. It's not a lot, but it's enough to keep your head above water. But honestly, none of you need to be posting more than twice a week. I think that that's unrealistic if you have another life, which all of us do. And so don't put pressure on yourself, Emil, to be posting all the time. The important thing is that you spread out the posts and that you don't stop because I think what's hard is when people, they, they post like once a day for two weeks and then they disappear for three weeks. That's not good. It's much better to take that big batch of photos and to distribute them over a long period of time. It's a lot easier. Yeah, wow, look at this. So Jude says, most of my learnings from Art Prof. Adeloche says, yes. Melanie, learning from YouTube as well as paid courses. Gabrielle is a YouTube student. So is Rosie and Luis and Pagarami. So yes, when you guys support our prof, <clears throat> these are the people you're supporting. You're helping these people who are in the chat have access to free art education because wow, I cannot believe how much they charge for some of these online classes. Like I look at them and I'm like, I wouldn't pay that. I mean, like I can't afford it and I'm not 16 and I have an income, so yeah. So I would say, Emil, really focus on the work that when you think about it is work that only you can do, not work that anybody can do. And it's really tricky because sometimes it's not always obvious which is which because like here this says work in progress this is a portrait of me as a child i look so angry but again it's like you're relying on the text caption to explain the image if i'm just looking at your instagram and i don't see any text caption because i'm too lazy to tap because we know some people are you know i look at this and i go oh it's a boy right and i don't have a lot of information about that portrait beyond that so make the assumption when you are putting together an Instagram, number one, people are lazy. Number two, they cannot be bothered beyond the first image. So whatever is the most important, that should be the first image. Don't put the secondary stuff later. Like for example, you have this one here, which is an installation piece, which is great. And actually I do like the video. I would actually put the video first. Because when I look at these three images, they're so zoomed in that it's actually difficult for me to get a sense of the whole thing. So it's better if you put the video first so people get a sense of the entire thing and then you zoom in and show them better 
what's actually going on. This one here is a close up, but it's out of focus. And again, not great lighting. The background has stuff on it. And the cropping's awkward because I like seeing the scale of your hand. That's very helpful, but it's not a great composition. So it's almost like you really have to treat every photo you put on Instagram as an art image. Like photography's hard. It's not easy. It's, it's easy to make bad ones. <laughs> great. Really easy to make terrible photos, but it takes a lot of time. Pallavi says, I just wish I had access to so many YouTube videos teaching art as a kid. I binge watch all the art prof videos and try to implement the techniques in my work. We have an amazing audience. I, I have to say, we, we this is like all the best art students. <laughs> like they're all in the one same place. All of you ask questions. You're so inquisitive. You're so engaged. And that's just phenomenal to have that. So yeah, Emil, I love your work. It's just a matter of maybe just taking away, like sweeping out some of that more generic work and put it into your Instagram stories. Because here, these are great. I love that you're showing the exhibitions. And so stuff like, um, like this image of this fish, a little bit less distinctive, put that in your Instagram story. So it's almost like you have to categorize some of the work and what, you, what you're what you thinking about. By the way, there will be a post stream chat, but I can't make it. I'm sorry, I have an appointment to go. So no post stream chat with me. But if those of you want to go over there and chat, which is fun, it's always fun to chat live and talk about Instagram and social media and get tips and tricks, that's a great opportunity to do that because on Discord, you don't always get to chat live. A lot of times people post, they come back. Chatting live is great. So I'm sorry I can't be there. But anyway, um, but it'll be in post live streams. I'm sorry, this is wrong. <laughs> this banner. Post live streams is the channel where you want to meet. Subscribe to our channel so you can continue to grow and develop as an artist. And I want to give a big shout out to our top Patreon supporters who make it possible for us to keep Art Prof 100% free and accessible to everybody. All of you, thank you, Amir. Thank you so much, Emil, for sharing your artwork with us. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.